Hello everyone. In query processing, today we are going to see block nested loop join. So learning outcome for this session is we will be able to analyze the cost of join operation using block nested loop join algorithm. So in the previous lecture, we have already seen nested loop join. So in nested loop join, we have already seen that we are going to compare tuple by tuple the relation R and S. So here we are going to process the relation on block basis instead of tuple basis. So here every block of inner join will be paired with every block of outer join. And within this each pair of blocks, now every tuple of one block is compared with every tuple of the other block over there to generate the result. So this will save major block accesses. So let us see how this works. So in the nested loop join, we have seen that we have read outer tuple of outer relation R and then compared this with all the tuples of inner relation S. Now the variation here is that we have to bring the first block of or we can say that the sequentially the number of the, the next block of relation R and the relation S to memory. After that, the every tuple from the first block that is uh, block BR is compared with every other tuple in the block BS. So once we have finished the comparison, the ne next block of tuple with, uh, uh, of relation S will be read. Again, the tuples from the same block of R will be compared with the tuples of relation S. In that manner, all the tuples of block the block BR will be compared with all the tuples of relation S. And once this comparison will be finished, the next block of relation R will be read. And again, this will be compared with the, all the tuples from all the blocks of relation S. So here, instead of only bringing the tuple of relation R and comparing with all the tuples of relation S, we are bringing the blocks of the relation R and S and then comparing the tuple by tuple. So as we have discussed, primary difference in the cost is that uh, here in uh, nested, uh, what you can say that in previous nested loop join, this was a comparison against tuple. Now this is the comparisons against block. So let us look at the performance. In worst case, again assume that the buffer can hold only one block of relation. So how many block transfers will be required? Now since we are reading this relation R only once, so that we will be requiring BR block transfers. Whereas the relation S will be read as many blocks are present for the relation R. So for the first block, entire relation S will be read. It means that all the BS blocks will be brought to memory. Then for the second block, again all the BS blocks will be brought to main memory. And that's why the total number of block transfers for S will be BR into BS. And therefore, the total number of block transfers will be BR into BS plus BR where of course BR and BS are the number of blocks in R and S. So how many SIG operations will be required? Again, each scan of inner relation require one SIG. And this re inner relation has been read BR times. That's why for relation R, R, S, we will be requiring BR SIG operation. Whereas for outer relation, we are going to read it blockwise. That's why again BR op uh, SIG operations will be required for R. Therefore, 2 into BR, that many SIG operations will be required for this block nested loop join in worst case. What about the best case? So assume that, uh, okay, so if the, both of the relations are not able to fit it in main memory or one of the relation is able to fit in main memory, then it's better to use smaller relation as an outer relation, okay. So if neither of them is not fitting into the main memory, then we have to go by block by block. Then what is the best case that inner relation fits in main memory? In that case, it will be that inner relation is, since it is available in main memory, it will be read only once and therefore block transfers will be again same BR plus BS and two SIG operations, which is same as nested loop join. So consider an example now, again the same example that we have seen for the nested loop join, that student and text are the two relations the number of tuples in students are 5000 and the blocks are 100, whereas number of tuples in text is 10,000 and number of blocks are 400. Now again, outer relation is student and inner relation is text. So what is the variation here is that first block of relation R and the first block of relation S and then first tuple will be compared with first tuple, then first tuple will be compared with second, then first tuple will be compared with third and so on with the, all the tuples from this block. Then second tuple 
of the relation uh, of the first block is compared with all the tuples of this first block of relation S and so on. Once this all the comparison has been finished, then the next block will be brought to main memory. This block will remains in memory only. So here is the case. So as we have seen, first block, the all tuples of block for one will be compared with block one of relation S. Then all the tuples of block one of relation R will be compared with next block, then the third block, fourth block, and then the last block. So assume that if there are three tuples, it will be compared with all the blocks of this tuple. So once this is finished, take the next block. So how many block transfers we have done? So for the first block, all the BS blocks has been read. For the second block, again all the blocks will be read and that is why we are having BR blocks. Therefore, the total number of block transfers for this relation S will be BR into BS. Whereas the blocks of R will be read only once, this is going to be BR. So number of block transfers will be 40,100, which is very less as compared to block transfers in nested loop join. And the SIG operations are also less. So this is only 200, which was 5,100 in nested loop join. So again, you can go back and see the result in the nested loop join. So if it is best case that there's both relations fit in main memory or in a relation fit in main memory, then we will be requiring only 500 block transfer, whereas two SIG operations. Okay. Now pause the video. Now if we will reverse the relations, that text is the outer relation and student is the inner relation. Then find out the number of total block transfers and SIG operations required. Yeah, so for this particular block, first block of relation R, we are going to read all the blocks of students. That's why, and there are 400 blocks in the relation text. So total number of block transfers will be 400 into 100 plus 400, that is again 40,400, which was 40,100 in the previous scenario. Whereas the SIG operations, if we can see, it has been increased to 800. Best case is remains to same that the 500 block transfers and number of SIG operations will be 2. So we have to see that the smaller relation will be, uh, sorry, the, the uh, relation which is the larger relation can be read only once and if it is possible try to fit it into the main memory. That is why the number of block transfers will be reduced and number of SIG operations will also be reduced. Now we can improve the performance of block nested loop join. Uh, how we can do is that if we are having the key defined on this uh, attributes which are going to be used for join, then this will be more faster. Another way is that we have seen that we are bringing only one block of relation R and one block of relation S. Instead, what we can do is that we can bring M minus two blocks of relation R in the main memory, one block of S and then one block for writing the output. So instead of one to one mapping, what we can do is that M minus two blocks of relation R will be compared with one block of relation S. So which will reduce the number of block transfers. So number of scans will be reduced from BR to BR divided by M minus two. Because instead of one we are bringing for example two, three, four and so on. Whatever the M is uh, the value accordingly the number of transfers will be reduced and that is why the cost will also be reduced. So if we can see that instead of BR into BS, it will be BR divided by M minus 2 into BS plus BR block transfers and same is the case for 6. Let us see with example. So previously we have seen the M was 3, now it is M is equal to 4. It means what? Instead of 1, we are bringing 2 blocks of relation R, 1 block of relation S. So all the tuples will be compared with the first uh, block. Then the all the tuples of the block 2 will be compared with the first block. Once this has been finished, these two will be in memory only. Next block will be brought to main memory of relation S. Again, the comparison will be done. In this manner, all the blocks of S will be compared against these two blocks. Okay, And that is why the number of transfers will be reduced. So it was earlier 40,100. Now it will be becoming BR that is nothing but here. Uh, number of blocks are here 100. So 100 divided by 2 that is 50 that has been read compared with 400 blocks of S and so total number of comparisons or the block transfers will become 20,100. 
So thus we can improve the performance of this block nested loop join by taking as many uh, blocks of relation R as possible in main memory. One way is that we can scan the inner loop alternatively forward and backward. What will happen due to this is that, so if the data is remaining in buffer only, so this can be used in previous scans, so which will reduce the number of disk accesses. And of course, if index is available on inner loop join attribute, we can replace the file scans with more efficient index lookups. Thus, how we can improve the performance of join operation using block nested loop join. Thank you.